You know, when I was practicing this yesterday, uh, Ellen Davidson, who's the director of social thinking here, who incidentally did not work with me, but I know her, you know, I've, I've talked to her on several occasions, uh, she asked me to start out my speech by saying, you know, I would very much like to thank the Academy. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of imitations of movie actors and stuff, so I guess it works. Yeah. <laughs> you know. uh, but, okay, I'm going to talk about me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I arrived in Bloomington eight years ago, in 2008, I was a junior in college, having spent three years studying for a Bachelor of Arts in English at Brescia University, a small liberal arts school in Owensboro, Kentucky. While I did very well academically, an incident of traumatic bullying left my parents thinking I needed a different environment. Uh, excuse me. One where the staff better understood the needs and challenges of students like me with autism spectrum disorders and learning differences. I arrived in Bloomington quiet and very anxious. I think Jim described it very well. Uh, but ready for a new beginning and a chance to start over far away from whatever happened back in Owensboro. The first year I spent a lot of time with the clinical psychologist, Dr. John Weller, um, in individualized therapy sessions, working on stress and anxiety reduction, as well as continuing to work toward my degree at IU. I also began to gain independent living skills by learning to assist in making simple weeknight meals and buying my own groceries. Now, the fact that I eat tacos three nights a week, it's okay, I like Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm making them. <laughs> I, I've gone from burning Easy Mac in the microwave, okay? <laughs> um, perhaps one of the biggest joys for my parents happened during Parents Weekend at IU. Or, excuse me, not that I use, but I use in here somewhere. Uh, uh, during Parents Weekend. As a child and all through college, I had always needed another student to accompany me due to a severe learning disability and high likelihood of disorientation. After head student advisor Jim Walsh taught me to navigate Bloomington by memorizing the names of the streets and certain physical landmarks around the city. I was able to walk my parents to IU, what did I tell you, I knew it was in there somewhere, <laughs> and show them where my classes were without getting lost for the first time in my life. I recently told my mom during lunch that being able to navigate on my own felt like being taken off life support and suddenly thrust out into the real world to breathe fresh air for the first time. After that first year, I went back to Russia to complete my degree, but came back after graduation to pursue further services in social skills and job development, as well as continued support with daily living skills. I have to say, the things I wanted most out of my time with CIP Bloomington <coughs> were to know how it felt to have a job and work for a paycheck and to have friends, real, honest to goodness, friends just like my peers. You know, when I speak to prospective families at open houses and talk about my experience with CIP, I nearly always mention that CIP is a two-way street. For every internship the career department found me, I wanted to make sure that the business knew they had made a good decision by bringing me on, whether it be at the YMCA where I taught school lessons to children and teens with disabilities, the Rider Magazine, or the Indiana Daily Student, the IU campus paper, especially the, IU, the IDS. Because IU's campus paper, paper was my first paid internship, and it was also the most fun. I felt like I belonged, the staff liked me, and I was, if for only perhaps the second time in my life, valued for what I was good at. By the end of my first week, I had editors saying, you got anything else? <laughs> and by the end of the year, I had two editors fighting over me to write for their desk. You know, I may not write for the IDS anymore, but I do write for the city paper, the Herald Times, as a columnist every Tuesday, discussing autism and disability-related issues, and have been, well, I should say will be, 
We hope that the issue would be out by now, but will be featured in Bloomington's Blue Magazine. Thing called life at CIP. Woo! 